Hey guys, it's DC here and today we have another episode of Last Week You Asked Me. Stay hydrated. Before we get started, I hope you enjoy my new setup here. Um, I basically rearranged my whole apartment to sort of work around this scene. So I hope you like it more than the um, green screen which kept bugging out and basically being a pain in the ass. Anyway, moving on to today's questions. We're going to head over to cybersecguidance.com and I've got a whole bunch of questions here that people ask me every week and I get around to answering them in these videos. So, first question is from SMK and he or she has asked, question for DC, how to freelance in this field? This is a pretty loaded question, I guess, and um, I guess the easiest way to freelance in this field would be to do something like bug bounties, only because you don't actually have to do any certifications or have a huge amount of prior knowledge going into it. So the, there is a learning curve, definitely, and don't get me wrong that there's nothing to learn with it and anyone can do it. Um, however, I believe anyone can do it. It's more that um, it's easier to sort of get started in. And what I mean by that is if you were to go to like Hacker One and um, have a look at that in Pentester Lab and maybe do some CTFs on the side, you could then learn enough tools to be able to do bug bounties. And I don't know if you've read too much about bug bounty hunters, but most of them don't really have too much coding experience. So it's not like it's it's an extremely hard um, coding heavy thing to do. And it's certainly difficult and you probably won't get paid much if at all when you first start but at least you'll be building experience as a bug bounty person or a web security auditor or something like that. And you can sort of title it however you like and then build uh, an experience profile based on that you've been doing bug bounties, which is awesome because you don't need to have gone to a help desk. You don't need to have gone through interview processes or anything before, although that is quite useful to have in your tool set. But yeah, what I'm getting at is if you want to get started freelancing in cybersecurity, I believe that bug bounties are definitely the best way to go about this and to approach it. With the learning curve as well, you're going to really hit uh, reading code day to day and that's something that is going to be useful through your whole IT career. So it's definitely worthwhile getting into bug bounties just at least for the learning curve of learning those different techniques and tools and things like burp suite and all of that sort of stuff learn that and then sort of work your way upwards from there i'm actually planning soon to do some bug bounties um, just to fill in my time and hopefully make some money while i'm out of contract for the next six months so i'll definitely make some videos on my learning process and then bug bounties that i'm going about trying to complete and yeah, just the whole process based on that so that you guys can learn how I've done it so then you can do it yourselves. The next question is from Nexus Raiden and he has said, DC, question, what is the best method for managing and monitoring your progression on different goals? Also, what is your preferred way of studying for certifications? Okay, first question, my best method for managing and monitoring progress. So I use Trello mostly for um, setting myself deadlines and uh, monitoring the process on that. I use it for my work stuff. I use it for my personal stuff. Um, any sort of projects that I'm going through, I use Trello. And it's just because you can make it as annoying as you want. Um, and what I mean by that is you can set it to send emails every freaking 15 minutes if you want, just to sort of hammer down that you need to get something done or you have a deadline and you can put pretty pictures in it and make it all nice and fancy and cool backgrounds and all of that sort of stuff and um, yeah it's it's a great product to use so that's how I monitor my own progress of where I'm at with different things and um, and then I set calendar alerts and I, I have it syncing to my calendar 
um, which also goes to my phone. So I have the app and the calendar on my phone. So I'm going to get double alerts for each thing that I need to do. And um, yeah, I basically just annoy myself until I get something done. That's, that's pretty much my process for monitoring my progression through different tasks. As for my uh, preferred method of studying, I definitely prefer doing a course online first. So I'll do some online reading to get some general knowledge. And then I go through sitting down in an actual study room. Um, so something like a, a classroom type situation. And um, an organization I've gone through a lot with is Pearson View and another one, uh, Red Education. They're pretty massive ones in Australia and I'm pretty sure Pearson is all over the world. And yeah, they have like small classroom situations with like 10 to 20 people. And you sit in there and you do the course and then at the end of the course you have to do the certification. And um, having that prior knowledge of um, the stuff that I've researched online and usually I'm trying to find something for free uh, online. So like a YouTube video or some free courses on Udemy or you know whatever I can find that's free that's on that topic. That's what I'm going to read up on or watch first. And then I go to the class, do the class. It usually takes three to four days. And on the fifth day or whatever the last day is, you then do the certification, which takes however many hours. Um, that's, that's sort of how I learn. I sort of cram it all into a one week situation um, with as much knowledge learning in that short amount of time as possible. So I, I definitely sort of learn by throwing myself into a situation like this better. Uh, rather than reading about something for weeks and weeks and weeks and by the time I get to the certification I've probably forgotten it. Um, that's not for everyone though so don't take my way of learning as something that you need to do. Everyone's different and everyone has their own way of learning different things. The next question is from H4R1 and they have said hey DC I got victims social media credentials when I'm trying to log in the victim has enabled two factor authentication. So how to bypass it. I hope this victim of yours is yourself and not something illegal that you're doing. Um, however, two-factor authentication can usually be bypassed by a man in the middle attack. I'm not going to tell you exactly how to do that because I don't want my channel to get demonetized or banned for teaching people how to hack. So um, yeah, have a look at man in the middle attacks and yeah, I guess work your way out from there. The butcher. GR has asked, so here is my question for you, DC, that I would like you to analyze in your next podcast, if possible. My main concern as a cybersecurity researcher is attributing cyber attacks. Cool, man. When attributing cyber attacks, we usually have tactical teams on and off site so that they are able to attribute a malicious incident. However, revelations of WikiLeaks, Vault 7, Hackers allegedly can make an attack appear from anywhere they want. Sort of, yeah. So, to your viewpoint, do you think we will ever be able to attribute cyber attacks with certainty? The short answer is no, not anytime soon. And what I mean by that is with AI sort of building up and finding these um, cyber attacks and where they're coming from faster than humans are, um, yeah, you will eventually sort of get a rough idea, but at the same time, technology is going to advance just as quick. So I guess the techniques for um, hiding your online footprint and um, I guess yourself in these cyber attacks is um, it's going to get harder as well. So it's, it's sort of hard to say. I don't really think it's going to happen anytime soon. Maybe the AI on the back end of finding where they're coming from will be smarter. I would assume so. And I assume that it would get better at finding people, but I don't know. I don't really think it's going to happen anytime soon. I don't think we're going to progress that fast into being able to completely secure an environment and find out exactly where people are coming from and what they're doing and you know, all that. Sort of, I don't think it's going to happen. We're not living in Hollywood, unfortunately. And, um, things like this don't they just don't happen like that it's that's sort of not how it works um but who knows things could change and maybe in the future or the, the soon to be future um some sort of technology breakthrough will come through where people are able to 
find exactly where people are coming from very quickly but i at the moment i doubt it i doubt it's going to happen anytime soon um not with certainty anyway anyway that's the last question on today's last week you asked me or luam um, i hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give me a thumbs up subscribe for more comment below if you have any questions that you want me to answer in next week's video and uh, yeah let me know what you think about my new little setup here if you like it um, if you don't like it, if the audio is shit, just let me know. I'm always happy to try and improve myself uh, based on your criticism. So yeah, thanks guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Catch you later.